Guess what, Infographics fans? That's right, it's challenge time again. Over the past year, we've been exploring the limits of human endurance, testing the strength of the human mind, body, and spirit. Today, we're back again with another special challenge episode, as we seek to delve once more into the greatest scientific mysteries of our time, such as what would happen to your body if you stayed in a bath for 24 hours without a break. This greatest of scientific explorations can only be undertaken by your favorite and our slightly less disposable than before staff writer. So stay tuned to find out just how pruney the human body can get. Hour Zero I've never done well in confined spaces. I remember when I went to see Kill Bill ages ago in movie theaters, and there's that scene where Uma Thurman finds herself in a coffin. I practically had a panic attack because I really hate enclosed spaces and sitting still for too long. Now, suddenly, my entire life for one day straight is going to be both of these things. Though I guess I should be grateful, I'm just going to be living in a tub and not a coffin. I immediately regret saying that because I'm sure someone over at the infographics just got a very bright idea for the next challenge. I have to live in the bathtub for the next day. I've made a habit of trying to think of what insane, dangerous, or humiliating challenge the infographics show could be coming up with next, but honestly, I never thought of this at all. And believe me, I've done a lot of brainstorming as I try to prepare for what might be next. It's a pretty obvious choice for a challenge, really, but so simple I never thought about it. I remember taking really long baths as a kid and I'd play with my Legos in the tub. It was a blast. My fingers would get all super pruney and the first time it happened I cried because I thought it was permanent. Of course, it didn't help matters any that my older cousin teased me and convinced me that I had just ruined my skin for life. Man, you sure are gullible when you're a little kid. I guess today I'm going to find out just how pruney the human body can get. I know from survival school that you want to keep yourself as dry as possible when you're stuck out in the wilderness because if your skin is always wet, it can start to actually slough off and expose lower layers of skin to infection and other nasty things. I can't help but wonder if something similar could happen here. I'm not sure how long it would take for skin to actually start falling off. I tried googling it, but surprise surprise, nobody really knows. I guess today I'm making internet history by discovering exactly how long until your skin starts peeling off like the peel of an overripe fruit. Hooray, he said very sarcastically. So the rules are simple, I have to stay in the tub no matter what. I'm only allowed to get out of the water to use the toilet, because we are civilized people after all. Other than that though, I can't get out of the tub. Once more food won't really be a problem thanks to food ordering apps and entertainment is simple with the phone and the laptop. Modern life is so convenient that it's a little scary to think I could literally live my entire life in a bathtub and never leave for anything. Even most of my work is done online over the computer, and I can sign up for electronic transfer for all of my bills. It's kind of fascinating when you think about it. Okay, I'll check in every four hours or so. I don't own Legos anymore, so I'll be entertaining myself by re-watching the Lord of the Rings trilogy and completely ignoring that the Hobbit movies were ever a thing. Hour 4 Rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, four hours in the tub. I'm not gonna lie, these first four hours have been kind of relaxing. We have a small tub, but it's kind of really relaxing. And there's soft padding on one end so you can lay back with bubble jets along the rib of the tub. It's actually a pretty sweet setup. Funny thing is, I've never in the seven or so years that we've been living in this apartment used the tub to take an actual bath. I'm just not a bath guy. And sure, a bath with your significant other is romantic, but our tub is sadly not big enough. Typically, the girlfriend takes a long bath once a week or so, and I totally get it now. I even used some of her fancy soap oils, and now my skin is silky smooth. I accidentally used too much of the bubble stuff, though, and for a minute I thought I was going to die from asphyxiation as more bubbles than you've ever seen in your life filled the tub and then literally went everywhere on the floor. Have you ever put regular dishwashing liquid in a dishwasher? Yeah, it was a lot like that. For 30 minutes, it was man versus bubble in this bathroom, with me fighting for my life against an inexorably rising tide of rose-smelling bubbles. Needless to say, the girlfriend is not going to be pleased about the mess. Well, I can totally see why she does her weekly hour-long bath. Sure, four hours is a bit much, but I'm still kind of loving it. My fingers are prune city, and I got curious and did some googling, and it turns out that your fingers may actually turn pruney because it's your body's way of helping you get a grip under the water. Very neat. It's getting close to lunchtime and I'm getting a bit hungry, but with food apps getting something tasty to eat won't be a problem. So far, one of the easiest challenges I've ever done. Hour 8 Okay, 
So I ordered lunch on Postmates and it wasn't until I got the notification that my delivery driver was a few minutes away that the fatal flaw in my plan suddenly hit me. I can't leave the tub to answer the door. I'm home alone. The girlfriend's filming and won't be back until later today, so unless I could teach the dog how to grow an opposable thumb and turn a doorknob, I was in trouble. Now, we live in a pretty safe part of LA, and even though I insist on the girlfriend locking the door when she's home alone, I honestly never do it myself when it's just me. I grew up in a really rough neighborhood, and the place we're at now is basically Disneyland by comparison, so I never feel the need. I'm sure you guys can already see where this is going, and yes, that's exactly where it went. When my driver arrived, I got the notification, Susan has arrived with your food. Then a moment later, this Susan called me to ask which apartment it was exactly. I knew it was a bad idea. I knew what it was going to look like, but rules are rules, and I could not leave my tub. I asked Susan if she would please bring the food up the stairs and into the apartment itself, explaining that I was suffering from a medical condition and was currently unable to make it to the door itself. Susan hesitated and really, who could blame her? But bless her heart, she agreed. A minute later, I heard the door slowly creak open and Susan called out, hello, in that unsure, very wary tone of a voice that any normal person would have not knowing if they were about to enter the home of a serial killer. My dog ran up to her immediately and he absolutely loves people, plus he was was pretty cute, so I guess that set her at ease. After all, what serial killer owns a happy little dog? I called out to Susan and apologized profusely, explaining I was stuck in the tub and would she please mind setting the food just inside the bathroom door. A very long, very awkward silence followed, and then Susan asked me, you're like normal, right? You're not gonna do anything weird, are you? Yes, dear Susan, I am a perfectly normal guy who just happens to have a job where he has to spend 24 hours in a bathtub, and now I'm asking you, a complete stranger, to walk into my house and bring me food as I marinate in lukewarm water completely naked, because my mouth often works faster than my brain. Before I could think about it, I blurted out, I mean, I'm mostly normal. Susan must have been an angel, or incredibly brave, because she came to the bathroom. I had created some courtesy bubbles to conceal myself, and we just sort of looked at each other for a moment. Then she placed the food down and shook her head, muttering, I really hate this job. Then Susan left. Wherever you are now, Susan, I am sorry this is the way you had to meet me, but thank you. Unfortunately, she left the food out of reach and I had to use the Swiffer I had been using to pull things toward me to slide the food close enough which resulted in the salad I had ordered to fall off the counter and spill everywhere. Because it was a salad, the dog refused to even touch it. So now there's a large Caesar salad decorating the majority of the floor to our bathroom, and some poor college-age girl working a part-time delivery job to make ends meet probably thinks I'm a sex offender. The girlfriend is really not going to be happy about any of this. Hour 12. I have officially spent half a day in the tub. The novelty has definitely worn off, and I had to drain the tub and fill it with cool water because I felt like sitting in lukewarm water this long was starting to make me dizzy. My fingers are basically ghost white at this point, and I'm more pruny and wrinkly than a Sharpay. My dog's been hesitantly coming to visit me in the tub. He typically will not enter the bathroom under any circumstances because he's terrified of getting a bath, and when it comes time to bathe him, it takes me and the girlfriend both to chase him down and then drag him into the tub. Today, though, I guess he figured it was safe to enter the bathroom, and maybe from his point of view, he was really sorry for me. I guess from the way he sees it, I must be in hell since I've been stuck in the tub for a half a day. He came by at one point and gave me a sympathetic lick on my hand. I'm feeling extremely restless. I really hate sitting still, which is why my previous challenge to sit on the couch and watch YouTube for 24 hours straight was so hard. Now I feel confined, and I swear I'm starting to get a little claustrophobic. I yearn to just walk around, stretch my legs. Heck, I'd even go for a run right now, and I very famously dislike running. It's a very boring exercise. Still, I'm halfway down and none of my skin has fallen off. Yet. 12 hours to go. Hour 16. So I started this challenge shortly after the girlfriend left for work and I realized I never told her. She got home and when she called out for me I told her I was in the bath. I could tell from the tone of her voice that she thought it was super cute. Like I said before, I never take baths and I'm kind of famous for it. Then she walked into the bathroom and found the bathroom floor covered in salad, which was itself floating in large puddles of water from when I overdid the bubbles and they got all over the bathroom. She didn't say a word at first, just looked around, looked at me, and facepalmed. 
then simply said, I need a shower, and she left to go next door to our friend's place so she could use her shower. Finally, she came back and simply asked me how many days I was going to be living in the tub, and she sounded relieved to hear that I only had a few hours left. Then she spotted the bottles of oils and bubbles that I had used and had a mini panic attack when she realized how much I had used, because apparently they are very expensive and you're only supposed to use a few squirts in your bath. I think I would used at least a quarter of each bottle. Well, now it's night time, and while she gets to sleep in the bed, I have to figure out how I'm going to sleep in the tub. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little scared of somehow drowning, which I'm sure sounds ridiculous, until you have to spend your entire day in a tub. Hour 24 it's morning and I am free. My night sleeping in the tub was terrible, if only because I kept waking myself up due to the irrational fear that I would somehow slip under the water and drown. Yes, I know the human body doesn't work like that, but don't judge me until you've spent a whole day in the tub. My fingers and my hands look like something out of a horror show, and when the girlfriend got a clear look at them this morning, she almost screamed. She's terrified my skin is going to start falling off now, and admittedly, it feels kind of like it could. It's really, really soft, like too soft. I tested it and I pinched one wrinkle and tugged at it and a few layers of skin came loose. Nothing major, but I feel like if I wanted to I could easily start ripping off a lot of skin on my body. Or at least my hands, toes, and fingers. Oh, and yeah, that one other part too. I think if you were to sit in a tub for say, three days, you could probably kiss some of your flesh goodbye, because it would probably fall right off. Either way, it's not something I'm eager or willing to try to find out. I'm really sore, especially from where my body was laying against the tub for most of the time, and the skin there is really whitish red and tender. I bet if I had stayed there much longer something similar to bed sores would have started happening. If you've never seen a bed sore, Google it right now and open up the images tab and then say goodbye to your meal plans. So yeah, spending a whole day in the tub is kind of monotonous and boring, even with the internet and modern conveniences. I honestly wouldn't recommend it, especially if you're a fan of your skin staying put on your body. Sadly, we were never meant to be mermaids, though while I was in the tub I did read that you would wrinkle less if you added salt to your bath water. In hindsight, it's something I wish I had read before I tried this. And yes, I left Susan a very big tip. How would you spend your day in a tub? What other crazy challenges can you think of? Let us know in the comments or email us on our website. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great content.